while Adam's getting his slides ready, I'll do his official introduction as moderator. Adam Lynch is our Vistro guru extraordinaire, and uh, very happy that uh, he is with us today. He is actually titled our Senior Product Manager for Traffic Engineering. As he mentioned, he is based in Karlsruhe, Germany. Many of you will recognize his face as a fellow former customer and um, Ohioan and Coloradan. I don't know if that's the right term or not, Adam. <laughs> But at any rate, uh, before joining PTV, Adam was instrumental in providing excellent feedback on all of our software and especially Vistro. So he is uh, especially duly suited for the hot seat later on today. Um, he is our technical product manager for Vistro, uh, coordinating both the product development and the technical content. Had worked previously at HDR and had many years of traffic engineering project experience. So with that, I'll turn it over to Adam. All right, thanks, Bill, for the introduction. And I'm uh, very excited to be kicking off the UGM this year and starting with the PTV Vistro What's New session for Vistro 2021. If you've been uh, following our LinkedIn posts and attending the PTV talks for Vistro, you know that a lot of these new features are very important to the daily workflow uh, that you may experience within your projects. So let's get started. Okay, so first I'll talk about uh, PTV Vistro's role in the urban mobility system, because a lot of these features apply directly to this topic of, um, of what's new in Vistro 2021. And at the end, uh, I'll also list the new examples that we have within the install file. Um, and I think you would find a lot of these new examples very useful now that we have some new features, such as the merge and update model features that can take these example files and, and be part of your model. All right, so the urban mobility system, I'm gonna start with this first. So the first question you may ask is, what is that? Uh, let me explain this to you. So the urban mobility system describes how um, our users can use the PTV vision suite in a maintainable environment. And of course, this is very useful for agencies and regions um, to take advantage of something that's maintainable. Um, if you look at the, the boxes up at top of this slide, um, these are the FHWA software categories. And within these categories, uh, you can see that PTV has a solution basically in every box here. And you can't necessarily say that about our competitors because a lot of them, or most of them, or pretty much all of them, don't have a solution in every box up, up, up at top. So PTV is very unique to be able to satisfy all of these categories for FHWA. And a lot of that has to do because of this urban mobility system or the vision suite that we offer within PTV. And in this system, PTV Vistro plays a key role in creating and maintaining the agency's planning models. And also for Vistro 2021, um, the VISM integration is greatly improved, which you're going to see in this presentation, and it opens up a lot of possibilities for analysis and creating the out-of-the-box simulations that you may have, again, seen on LinkedIn or some of the other previous presentations. So here's another look on the Ergo Mobility System and kind of how it is uh, constructed and, and how it works. I mean, basically, this shows in the yellow boxes that um, how an agency's traffic operations team, or maybe even their consultants that work for them, can use Vistro daily. And by using it daily, they, they'll make small tweaks, maybe in the signal timing that's out in the field, or maybe add changes such as a, um, you know, they put in an extension to a turn lane, and they'll have that in Vistro. Uh, or maybe they even go through an entire restriping project or even something a little bit more serious. But again, all of these little tweaks that agencies make, um, especially you know at city levels or region levels, of course, throughout the year can, can build up and then quickly outdate that planning model. Um, so what, what this does within the urban mobility system, you can feed these changes from, from Vistro, which is your deterministic planning or a traffic operations model, and feed this directly into um, Vsoom. And that keeps that planning model up to date throughout the year, and it makes it more useful 
So you can use it for spur of the moment projects or even projects that require more junction details and more information like that. And in this closed loop urban mobility system, this gives PTV a, a huge advantage, as I mentioned from the FHWA slides. Um, we, we have this closed loop and we're able to maintain the system. And again, our competitors can't really claim the same. All right, so let's just jump in with the new features and what's new with PTV VSERO 2021. Now, our first feature, we have a, a new map layer within uh, Vistro, but as well as in the other um, products that we have in our vision suite. So this new map layer replaces the OSM layer and um, it's based off of here maps. And what it does is it gives you the ability to have different visuals within the OSM card. So you have different colors and different styles within the OSM card. Um, these are video files. I'm not entirely sure when they'll start kicking on or if they'll start playing here. But um, within these videos, you'll be able to see different map styles within your network editor. And um, you can use these map styles to maybe find local businesses that are, that are on the street. So if you need to add a driveway or something like that, um, maybe you can use these map styles to identify uh, one-way streets, um, but there's this other map style that I really, really like, which is this black marble view. Um, and you're probably not going to see it in this video, but the black marble view is something that really makes a Vistro network pop out because it has that gray background with the, with the street. So the, the black view kind of pops out the network and it's, it makes a great visual. Next, we have a model merge feature. And within this feature, what it does, it, it allows you to minimize the rework and kind of make your experience modeling more efficient. So you can reuse existing models that you have. Uh, maybe you have a model in an adjacent area and you need to combine the two models together for a corridor. Or if you have a bunch of template files, which I know a lot of uh, consultants probably do, they have template files of advanced interchanges or something like that. You're able to take these templates and, and bring them into the uh, Vistro model. So this is a really, really big feature for us. And also this feature facilitates teamwork within Vistro, which is really cool. Everybody likes working faster and as a team. And if you stick around today for the tips and tricks session, I'm going to discuss uh, both of these, actually how to insert a template and also how to, how to work as a team within Vistro. Okay, so um, again, not really quite sure if the video is gonna pop in or work, but how this, this works is that you, you will start with one model and you would call that one model your target. And then you have another model, which is in this example is model two. And um, that has you know, different pieces or different elements that you wanna merge into your target model. And so, under the file export feature, there's a new option called data merge and data merge allows you to export out the, the, the guts basically of that model. And then you go back into model one or your master model, and then there's file import merge data and you can bring that model directly in, into Vistra. So it's, it's pretty easy to, um, to take that data and it's pretty quick to go in there. I know with other softwares you have to do with, um, with templates. Um, it, this isn't nearly as restrictive as that. So it's, it's a free environment to, to merge in models. So the next um, feature we have is the update feature. So it's like similar to the merge, but with the update feature, if you have, um, similarly structured networks. So like the node IDs are the same and the signal IDs are, are the same. And what typically happens maybe is if you had synchro files, the bad word, if you had synchro files and um, you have you have a bunch of different files in your directory that's, that's broken out by peak times or uh, by volumes or horizon years or something like that, you no longer have to deal with these multiple files. You can package them all into one Vistro file. And so with the model update feature, what you're able to do 
is uh, create another data file, but this one's called update data um, from one network. You create the data file and then you would import it into a scenario of, of your master network. And that's a way to package all of these files together into one. And again, I'll, I'll cover this uh, more in depth today with the tips and um, tricks section um, a little bit later. And so we have a video of, of how this works. So when that comes in, there's the, um, the Vistro files. Again, those were the synchro CSVs that I created into Vistro files. Um, then you would go in and create a, a bunch of different scenarios in your master model. And then with, within each scenario, you can then use the file import and import in that update file. So stay tuned for that a little bit later. Okay, now also we have a traffic signal controller list. Um, doesn't sound like a, a big feature, but I, I really think it is. So with this traffic signal controller list, it gives you an opportunity to, to view the list where you can see the intersection number and you see the traffic controllers um, associated with that intersection right next to each other. And then also within this list, you can update the traffic controller ID number, which is something you couldn't do before in previous versions. Now you can actually update the signal ID number for that intersection. And we also improved the handling as part of this feature. So um, when, you, when you import, or not import, but when you create an intersection in Bistro and say it's intersection 100, the signal ID will also be intersection or signal ID 100 when it's created. And if you change that ID, um, say it was 100 and you change it to 200, then automatically the signal ID will change with it to, um, to signal ID 200. But then again, within this list view, it's flexible and editable and you can go back and, and change any way you want to do it. So in this video, we have a lot of um, traffic signals within it. And if we click open our, um, our traffic control tab, we can change the signal ID numbers within this traffic control tab, just like I mentioned. And then when we go over to the um, controller view here, you can see that now that intersection is also the same number as that. So I'm gonna skip over that a little bit because I don't think the videos are coming in. Next, we have two very important features uh, within Vistro. We have the crosswalk, setback and stop line setback feature. And these features will um, help you size the intersection within Vistro visually. And then that data transfers into the, the VISM simulation. Um, this really is a great feature because if you think about how you want in micro simulation, how you want the, the signals to operate and work, it really depends on the intersection distance that vehicles have to cross over the intersection and get to the next intersection. So it, in micro simulation, it really helps you understand that green wave and green time and gets all those parameters correct coming from Vistro into VISM. So within here, um, hopefully this video comes in because this one's actually pretty nice. And if not, um, we'll, we'll have all these videos online maybe later today and in, in a place where I can show you where they're at. But, um, with this, you yeah, it's not coming in, so I'll just skip over it. All right, next we have the, the corner radii. And with the corner radii, we, we also have those visualized in Vistro, and this makes a really great sketch tool within Vistro. Um, it allows you to kind of fill that space because before it was just a standard radius, but now you have the ability to update that radius and fill the space within the intersection. And again, this comes straight into um, VISM from Vistro. So you have these radii to be those um, external connectors you know, from the intersection. So like all the right turn connectors or something like that would have that radius that we've coded here. And um, one thing to note, if you're working with an older Vistro file, we have a multi-change tool. 
And this multi-change tool um, has a bulk edit. So you can change all of these radii to um, whatever value you need to change them to within a bulk edit, because if they weren't previously defined before, they're gonna come in with really sharp angles. So this multi-edit edit tool is going to be able to fix that very quickly. So next we, um, we have a vehicle miles traveled feature or vehicle kilometers traveled feature, depending on where you're joining us today and depending on what units you're working with. Um, this is a really great feature if you're in California right now because of the new legislations with VMTs and understanding the VMT impacts of new developments and things like that. So Vistro is glad to assist with that legislation. So how this works is on the trip assignment table. Um, every, every trip assignment will have a line and this will calculate a VMT in the, the right column. And this VMT will be from, you know, from the zone to the, to the gate basically um, of that assignment. So when, when you have all of these trips, you can add everything up. And at the bottom, there's a sum of the VMTs for each zone or each project, depending on, on how you set up your analysis. So it's a, a real good way to, to kind of come up with these VMTs of, for a new development and see how many trips you're adding to the network. A lot of people are really interested in that. And now, um, this is actually probably one of those features where we would get a lot of applause, but everyone's on mute, so we, I won't hear it. But uh, after a lot of feedback, we can now update the approach cardinal directions. So um, there was the, the north, south, east, west description for each approach. Um, if you go and click on that drop down arrow, you're able to actually change that. And Vistra smartly will orientate and change the other ones associated with it. So you don't have to go through all four or five or six legs and update that. Um, again, this is accessible with that drop down list. So this is really handy for intersections that have a network skew, um, or maybe if you're working on a 45 degree angle. Or if you have a route that um, maybe it's a north-south route, but in that particular section, it actually is an east-west roadway, you can keep the, um, the descriptions consistent. And then finally, we're going to show the improved AMs. Um, let's show, well, I can't show the video, unfortunately, but um, you've probably seen it before on LinkedIn. But with this, uh, with the improved AMs, many of the features that I just discussed, like the radius, the crosswalks, the stop line setback, and then the medians have better visualization uh, within the VISA model. And so um, this creates that really powerful out of the box simulation capabilities directly from Vistro. As well, again, it makes a pretty good sketch tool. I mean, you could take this to a public meeting, and I think you could communicate the design pretty effectively. With, it, with the sketch itself coming from Vistro. And maybe I'll just hang on this when the video comes in for half a second. It may not play all the way through, but at least you'll get to see kind of a still shot of, of kind of how the VISM simulation looks, okay? So um, with these extra details, I mean, you can see that the cars are fitting in the lanes. Um, if there was actually playing, you could see how people are turning in the dual left turn lane and kind of hugging that that's the cat track line that's in the middle. Um, so by spinning those extra details in Vistro, you can get these simulations pretty quickly and it, it will save you a lot of time on the back end. And as well, you can see with this improved integration, it helps with alternative intersections. So we have a, a nice, perfect DDI fitting the base map where, again, other software, if you look at the how they code these alternative intersections, that it requires a lot of real estate to actually get the geometries to fit correctly. But within Vistro, it's no problem. You can actually have it on the base map. And that's perfect because, again, if you want to take this to, to Visum, it's going to fit 
uh, exactly on the base map in VISM and do the micro simulation stuff that you need to do on from that side. And you can use Vistro to, um, to test the signal timings. You can use Vistro to test the lane configurations and do all of this stuff before you go into micro simulation. So it's, it's really powerful with the, the Vistro 2021 features that we have, especially in this area of micro simulation capabilities. And so I'm gonna skip over this last one before because we showed this video within the PTV talks. And I'll go straight into the example files that we have for PTV Vistro 2021. Now, we, we spent a lot of time actually on example files this time. Um, we, we've added an entire folder dedicated to alternative intersections. And um, I'm planning to also expand on this through further service packs. Um, for example, I'm working on one right now for a signalized roundabout in Washington, D.C. And if you've been to Washington, D.C., there's tons of signalized roundabouts. So I think it's going to be a pretty good example for the area and just kind of show, again, the power that Vistro has for these unique, these unique intersections and opportunities. Uh, another thing we have is a freeway ramp example. It's actually in Denver, Colorado. It's a just a basic uh, merge diverge section, but it shows you that you can you can code these merged and diverged sections if you're planning to do something in micro simulation later. Um, at this time, Vistro doesn't have the capability to actually do the analysis for freeways, but um, again, you can you can have that on the micro simulation side. And then you may have seen the cycle track example from our PTV talks. Um, we have that included in the example files as well with um, some pretty good documentation that goes along with how to set this up. Um, and then we have a new city grid model of Austin, Texas, which you're probably gonna see a little bit today in the tips and tricks session if you join. Um, this city grid model replaced the Tyson's corner um, model that we had, because that was really outdated and I started fixing it. And I was like, oh man, I just wanna put a new one in. So we put it in Austin, Texas instead of Tyson's corner. Um, the Atlanta model and the Chapel Hill models have been modified to kind of reflect the, the geometry changes and updates that we made in Vistro 2021, and they look really good. And again, the micro simulation in these models look pretty good as well. Um, so with that, let's go into um, my last slide here. Make sure you check out our Vistro knowledge base and resources that we have on our um, Vistro page. If you really just do a Google search for Vistro Knowledge Base, it's going to show up. Uh, but we have a feature learning center that has articles um, that can kind of guide you through use cases. And if you need to show customers and clients these use cases, I mean, it's, it's a good resource for that. As well as web series uh, where we have the PTV talks listed and then some other just really quick promotional videos of Vistro. Um, we have the article on the urban mobility system and explaining this this uh, integration as well. Um, also, don't forget to sign up for the PTV Vistro form if you have not done that yet. Just look it up in LinkedIn and we'll get you in as a member. So that's pretty much it for me, Bill. All right, thank you, Adam. So I have to make my first apology of the day. It's only 9-11 Pacific. And I, <laughs> we are so excited about Vistro. We rolled Adam right into the presentation at 8.50. So um, we are gonna try to stick to our start times as, um, as, as published throughout the rest of the day. Um, I think it didn't do much harm looking at the number of attendees that joined afterwards was, was not all that many. Um, but if you did join right at nine or noon Eastern and we were in the middle of that already, please accept my apologies. Um, we'll we'll get you the information that we need. Um, I, I do have some questions, Adam, that I can ask of you. And also, since it's uh, just 12 minutes past the hour, Adam, I don't know if there's any way to think about broadcasting any of those videos via some other thing, if you can think about that for a moment or not. If not, yeah. that's fine. Um, so with that, why don't I go ahead and start? I do have some general announcements too, but let's stick to the Vistro questions first. Um, and 
I'm just going to go ahead and and uh, lob these up to you, to you, Adam. Um, so the first one is: Can the merging of the models be done for a specific scenario versus just the base scenario? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So the the model merging works with the scenarios as just as well as working with um, a file or the base scenario. So if you have um, yeah, an alternative intersection and you want to put it into a build out scenario only, you, you're able to do that the same way. Just open up that scenario and, and run the, the merge data file. Yep. Great. Um, all right. And if, if uh, you know, as, as we're answering these questions, please continue to, to add more if you if those spur additional questions for you or if you're thinking at this time, I do see the list growing. So that's fabulous. Um, I, I debated whether I'm going to call out the asker or not. So uh, <laughs> you know, if we were alive, right, we'd all be raising hands and people would be looking, who, who, who asked that question? So at any rate, um, I won't just for now. But you know, if 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 I if I not bring up who asked the question, I I am squashing the brilliance of your question. Please accept my apologies. Um, but uh, we'll we'll just stick to that for today. Um, is it possible to Adam to show how we can implement interchange um, beneath if it's beneath an intersection and how to build the networks? I think the question is like, can links overlap? Is the way I'm interpreting that. Yeah. So let me switch over to my bigger screen. If I can do that. Uh, hold on one second. I think I killed the screen. Yeah, I'll just go to my my little laptop screen for a second, and then I'll show you. Um, <laughs> improvise. So with Vistro, I mean, there's no um, elevation view or anything like that um, in like a 3D mode or something, but what you can do is overlap two legs. So let me just real quick, just pretend like we have a great separation um, at this intersection here. So I can drag a leg and it's gonna take a while. I, there it goes. We have to today just really be mindful of zooming in and out within the software, I guess. There we go. And so what you can do is, is drag a leg and then you can cross another leg on top of it. So, I mean, it's not gonna automatically create an intersection unless you want it to. Um, so this would be a way to kind of represent overlapping legs, um, at an interchange or an overpass. And it really, the, the order, kind of shows both it doesn't like show one in preference of another so I hopefully that answers the question there on that yeah I think it's a good point too right that um Vistro being a node-based software allows that flexibility so it's not automatically mm -hmm. creating nodes when you overlap links so very good okay um the next question is when you do merge models do all the data like traffic volume signal timings etc get merged in as well or just the roadway network yeah, that's a good question. And again, I'm going to go through that a little bit later today in the tips and tricks um, at, through each process. But what happens is with, with the merge data, um, it will basically take in everything uh, from one network to the other network. And if, and if there's a node or a signal controller number that's conflicting, it will automatically create a new um, intersection number or controller number. And actually, if if they're if they're on top of each other, it will put it on top of each other. So it, when it says merge, it, it takes everything. Um, so it'll take volumes, it'll take signals, it'll take geometry. All of that will come in. What won't come in is more of the line-based information, um, such as the trip assignments and, and route optimization. So if you had, and I'm going to explain this with the teamwork part later in the tips and tricks. If you have um, optimization route, uh, what you would want to do is merge all that information in first and then draw the optimization route or draw the trip generation assignment. Cool. Um, the um, <laughs> Just like in real life when there's lots of distractions when you're on these webinar calls, <laughs> got multiple texting things going on uh, to try to make sure all this works out. Anyway, um, 
thank you all for your attention and interest. Uh, we will continue with a very good question here. Adam, maybe you can explain this a little bit. Um, question says, uh, we're not currently using Vistro, but they do use vSIM and it takes a lot of time uh, modeling vSIM manually. Is it possible to export from Synchro to Vistro and then into vSIM to get the vSIM network? Yes. <laughs> so, <Sorry. laughs> I mean, um, okay, so there, there's a few schools of thought. I mean, don't use Synchro if you don't have to. Um, start with Vistro first and you might save a step there. But okay, we understand the situation. Um, if you have a Synchro network, again, you make the CSV file, it's the combined CSV file, and you can bring that into Vistro. And once it's into Vistro, um, it's probably going to be in the middle of the ocean or, or somewhere it's not supposed to be, um, depending on where you are in the world. I think mostly North America ends up in the Atlantic Ocean or under Africa or something like that. Um, with, with that, that's, that's no problem. Um, Vistro, and I can show you on my little laptop screen here. If you click on an intersection and right click, there's something called map this point to background position. And so once that network is in the ocean, you can click this button and then find your next intersection. And basically it will move that network to the Bing base map where it needs to be. Um, the final thing that may happen is that the, the curvature from the, I think it's called Bezier curves that are in synchro, the two really annoying pick boxes like those won't um, come in within PTV products at all because we use poly points to get a real nice, smooth, easy curve. So that curvature will have to be recoded with spline points. But again, within Vistro, that's just simple clicks to kind of create that, whoops, went too far there. Simple clicks to create that curvature. Okay. All right, good deal. Um, Adam, just let me know if I cut you off or if you're done, then, then I, I'm, I'm scanning through the, the questions as we go. All right, excellent. Does the Vistro slash A&M export into vSIM include separate links for the turn lanes, as this will help with measuring cues in vSIM? Yeah, um, I definitely know what you're talking about there. So if you have a turn lane, um, like a, a left turn or a right turn lane that's exclusive. One modeling practice would be to code those as separate um, links, and then you would, your throughs would be on one link, and then your right would be on one link or something like that. So the the AM picks one, <laughs> and it, what it does is actually combine the the link um, as it's just one link that comes in. So it'll have the turn lanes. Oh, and, the, and, and the connectors connected to the correct lanes, but it will just all be one link. And a lot of times that can be updated with the emergency stop distance or the lane change distance. You can use that um, to, to be able to kind of decide where, where it has to go. If there's the possibility where that doesn't help, because sometimes it doesn't, um, what you could do is just copy that link with the, the control and kind of shift over. And um, that will give you so, um, a link that's kind of the same um, spline points and it would be parallel to the maybe the through link or something like that. And then you can just reduce the number of links and then you'll have that link um, adjacent to the through lane. And so it's it's a couple clicks to, to maybe fix that, but um, yeah. It's it's coming in as one link. That actually may be a good feature. And I know, I mean, Lucas is on here. He's probably listening as well. Um, that may be a good feature to have that as an option. Um, something maybe to look into on the AM. All right, cool. Another another good question here. Um, and and some of these, like you're saying, uh, can, can also add into kind of feature requests if, if we're not already doing them mm -hmm. and, and maybe part of even uh, similar to, to hot seat type questions as well. But this one um, was if there's plans to add list functionality similar to Vizoom, so that results can be placed in tables that can then be copied right. to and queried in spreadsheets and databases. Uh, maybe you can talk about what we already do for copy and paste into spreadsheets mm -hmm. and stuff. 
first? Yeah, so um, there, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, so when you're like thinking about lists like in, in Visum and in Vistro, um, yeah, we, we have the, I guess the, the tables with uh, trip generation, if I had a trip generation here, I don't know, let me create one really fast. So um, we have our trip generation table. You can copy this data and put it into Excel and kind of use Excel to manipulate the data and then paste it back in if you need to. Same with the, the, the distribution table. If you had a bunch of distributions, you can post-process that and bring it back in with, with copy and paste, which is nice. Um, one of the intentions that we, we actually had with our multi-change tool is um, if you click on edit multi-change, this is like the bulk edits that we have in, in Vistro. And this, this as well functions similar to a list where you can see how many intersections you have in the network. And then there's like filters to, to filter the intersection names or control types for that intersection. Um, but then you can go in with, with here and access the, the attributes that you would want to change and do that in a bulk manner, similar to maybe what you do in Visum or Visum, changing um, attributes in a bulk sort of way. Um, and you can select all the intersections with checkboxes. You can select one intersection. Um, you can filter again by you know, the, the traffic control that the intersection has. Uh, so there's, again, there's a lot of filtering tools to, to get the selection set that you would want. And so when we built this feature, we were kind of thinking about lists in mind. Um, and to continue on that, when we built the um, edit controller list, uh, it should be popping up shortly in the audience view. Give me one second. It's really far behind, isn't it? There we go. It's thinking. Is it thinking? There it is. Okay, so with the edit controller, um, this is kind of a list just for, for signal IDs and controllers, but again, it, it's that same mindset of, of building lists. So we'll be doing this more and more with um, some new features that we have. Very good. Um, so I, we'll take one or two more. I'm going to read. There's a number of questions here. Uh, then we're going to switch. I'm going to do some housekeeping announcements, and then we'll prep for our next uh, presentation here at the half hour mark. But Adam, a uh, couple questions um, following kind of on this import export options. Um, you know, can, can you talk about exporting from Vistro to CSV or into Vistro, like things like volumes or things like that? Um, just, I know that's kind of a quick answer, but maybe you can talk about that for a minute. And um, and then the other question is uh, uh, a little more, well, a couple of these I'm gonna put to the hot seat, actually. We're gonna save them because we won't have time to ask answer them right now. But Adam, that one's kind of quick. And then um, the other thing I'll take the answer to, which was was a great, uh, it says great additional features. The Vistro, will existing Vistro subscribers all have access to Vistro 2021? So I will, I'll, I'll take that answer, which is absolutely. So if you're part of our, if your maintenance is active um, or if you have a subscription to Vistro that is current, then you should have received information from us about how to download uh, the new version. If you haven't, then please reach out uh, to us uh, by email and we'll be happy to get you the information. But yeah, as long as you have current maintenance or current subscription, then you can download uh, there. That's all part of the coverage of, of your uh, maintenance subscription. So, so it's available to you. Um, all right, Adam, you want to talk about the export and um, maybe also exporting the detail. Can you export the next question is about uh, summarizing like delays, LOS and queue links and tables, um, that kind of thing. And then uh, after you're done with that, I'm going to need to transition us out of here. And any any questions we didn't get to, we'll either cover during the hot seat or uh, after the fact. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, first, well, I turned off the background to see if that helps with with the rendering of the video feed here. Maybe I'll just turn off my camera too and see if that helps with. Let's hold on one second. Yeah. So with, with the volume export, uh, if you go to file export, there's, there's a whole bunch of different options you can do for exporting the data out of Vistro. 
So, I mean, if you needed to export a Synchro CSV file, you can do that with, with the export option here with Synchro, and that would give you the volumes and traffic signals and information going into Synchro. Um, the other thing you can do is this values table with the export, and within the that's values table, I'm sorry, what was that, Bill? Like, that's the one I wanted you to show. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. With the, with the values export, um, there's the ability to export all intersections or select set of intersections, but you have the ability to, to take a bunch of different volume parameters, essentially. You can take your in-process volumes, your pass-by trips, and, and all of these, these items, and what that does is export um, the intersections that you select, either all or just one, It'll, it'll take that volume and export it out to an Excel table. Um, and then within that Excel table, you can either type in the volumes in, um, maybe from traffic counts or from another spreadsheet that you have and put them, in, put them in that CSV file. And then there is also an import. So if you respect the same structure and format of that CSV, um, you go to uh, import values. Yeah, I'm watching it. And then you're able to select that uh, .csv file and actually import it. And when you do that, that's gonna bring in the, the volumes and the information that you had. Um, as far as like, I think one of the follow-ups was about delay and, and something like that as well. Yeah, let me, I'll just answer it real quick just because okay. we're running out of time, Adam. Um, we'll, we can give a more complete answer later, but one of the things you can do in Vistro is a, when you run a report, you don't just have the PDF option, there's a CSV option. So you can manipulate, well, manipulate always seems like a bad word, but you can, you can, you can take the data at, uh, and create an output that is Excel mm -hmm. readable and maybe make your own reports that you're interested in or use it for other post-processing needs. So uh, beyond that, we're, we're going to need to yeah. uh, transition to our next thing. Uh, Adam, thank you very much for all the exciting, uh, presenting all the exciting Vistro 2021 features and, and some new use cases and, and so forth. We appreciate that.